Stacey's our founder and I'm the, the executive director. So I ran the day-to-day -day operations and I still do. Um, and so uh, I think it was really important. I think that there was an acknowledgement that Georgia was changing. Like the entire country is changing, right? A lot has been written about the fact that by 2040, America is gonna be majority people of color country. Um, but what I don't think that people know is that Georgia is gonna be a majority people of color state by like 2024, 2025. That's like legit around the corner. Um, and what does that mean for us? What does that mean for the minimum wage? What does that mean for the criminal legal system? What does that mean for our environmental practices? And so we wanted to create a political home for young people and for people of color uh, that, do, that does this work year round, registering people to vote, connecting them to their power, and not just when it's time for an election. Because um, given the history, the long, and recent history of voter suppression in Georgia, you don't register half a million black folks in one election cycle. That's work that, that's the day in, day out work that we do to build a new Georgia. I was born in Africa, but I grew up in Southwest Atlanta. Um, and so, you know, when my mother sort of made the decision um, that we were gonna become US citizens, like it was my responsibility to make sure that they didn't embarrass us and that everybody in my family passed the citizenship test. Uh, and so I think that that definitely was an early understanding of the role that individuals play in the democ in democracy. Um, it also exposed me early on to the hypocrisy, right? Like the gap between the rhetoric around America and American democracy and the reality that we talk about our democracy in ways that I can absolutely get behind, but the way that people actually experience it um, is something totally different. And so that definitely has been something that I've been um, aware of for quite some time. But I was a math and science nerd uh, growing up. I'm, I mean, this is embarrassing now. Actually, I'm not embarrassed. The 90s were a different time. My childhood hero was Ben Carson. Uh, I know, I know, I know, I know. Uh, but listen, gifted hands, like I, you mean that you, babies get sick, right? And that there's somebody that can help babies not be sick. That was definitely, I absolutely wanted to be a pediatric neurosurgeon. Then I got to college and pledged and, and then, you know, had organic chemistry and started exploring other ways <laughs> to change the world uh, beyond a medical profession. Um, so what I've always known is that I want to do what I can, when I can, to contribute to building a better world. Um, that I ain't gotta do everything because everyone has a lane. Um, but you know, I have some gifts, some talents, some passions that I can add to the collection plate, to the collective, uh, to build the better world that we want to live in. So we're in the middle of a pandemic, right? And it's scary. And because of a lack of leadership, we are now at a place where more people die every day due to COVID than who died during 9-11. And that was considered a national tragedy. Um, and, we're, and it's happening every single day. Um, and that there is an opportunity to elect people, particularly with Asaf and Warnock, um, that there's an opportunity to elect people who take this coronavirus seriously um, and who can be a part of uh, doing all that it takes to protect Georgians and to protect American families. Um, there, all of our research shows that COVID is the number one issue that people are concerned about because folks don't want to die. So that's not odd. That's not crazy, right? Um, and the only thing it shows also, it also shows that for men, it's COVID as an economic issue, um, which is also a real issue because we're talking about 400,000 Georgians uh, that are on the verge of losing their homes, um, state unemployment benefits about to run out. Um, it's about to be 
nuts. And if we are going to get to the business of building back America and building back Georgia strong, then we need to give our current um, president-elect uh, Biden and Vice President-elect Harris an opportunity um, to work with a Congress that will do work right now. Um, we are looking at if, if, if Warnock and Ossoff win, that means that the United States Senate will be divided 50-50. 50 Republicans, 50 Democrats. And if they can't agree on how to jumpstart the economy, how to get another stimulus check or another relief check into the hands of Georgia's families, then guess who has to break that tie? Kamala Harris, Vice President Kamala Harris is going to break that tie, which means that she might end up being the most important vice president in the history of American politics. Um, and so, and Georgia voters can do that, can deliver those conditions. And that's why it's so important that folks get out and vote um, on January 5th, uh, because Georgia can be responsible for getting America back on track. The turn up is on the way. I keep promising it. It's got to happen. You're because you're right. We do need to celebrate our victories. We're always in battle mode. And the way that you sustain that is by like, again, injecting moments of joy uh, into the work that you're doing. So we haven't done a really good job about it up to this point, but we got some stuff coming. We got some stuff coming. And I think that people, I want my team uh, to know how valued they are and how much I appreciate them and the sacrifices that them and their families have made. Let me tell you, I know all the husbands, all the wives, all the kids can be putting dirt on my name. <laughs> it's almost over it's almost over um but again i think that we do this work because we love ourselves and because we love our families right um that it's for the love of our families for the love of our communities that we're tilling the soil right like the minimum wage in georgia is five dollars and 15 cents an hour and we have elected officials that are not embarrassed by that right? They do not care about us and our families. And so while we work to get new people in office uh, on the state level, we're continuing to build power to do voter education, to do voter registration, to sort of build the army, right, that is needed. Elections are just to find out who we are going to co-govern with. A nap, for sure, for sure. <laughs> and then you know some deep couch sitting i gotta catch up there's so much that i have to catch up on um and then um you know 2021 uh at least in georgia there's the mayor of atlanta's race uh but there are also mayor's races all over the state um, so we're excited about, uh, you know, recruiting, training, and supporting uh, millennial and Gen Z mayors, people running for city council, um, women and femmes. Um, as we go into uh, 2021, uh, we might also have to go into defensive mode, um, that there are a lot of people who are still claiming that Joe Biden isn't the rightful president um, and that the election was stolen. And I don't think that those people are going to go away. Um, and so figuring out like how we protect ourselves and protect the work going into 2021, I think is also going to be a really, really big deal. I'm Nse Ufad and this is Remotely Renee.